Drug abuse is a huge problem all over the world. Drug-related deaths have skyrocketed in the last 20 years. There are more deaths, illness, and disability from substance abuse than from any other preventable health condition. One in four deaths is due to drugs. Prescription drugs and opiates are major problems in the U.S. So let's learn a little about the biopsychology of drugs. A psychoactive drug is any substance that affects the brain and therefore influences your emotions, your mood, your behaviors, and your thinking. Psychoactive drugs almost always affect chemicals at the synapses in multiple brain areas. Now, a synapse is the place where one brain cell sends a signal to another brain cell using chemicals called neurotransmitters that are received by other chemicals called receptors. And this causes a chemical reaction, which results in communication between brain cells. Some psychoactive drugs increase the activity of the neurotransmitters. Those are called agonists. And some drugs reduce transmitter activity or transmitter effects. They are called antagonists. Psychoactive drugs enter the brain through the bloodstream and they activate a pathway in the brain called the pleasure pathway or the reward pathway. This starts at the ventral tegmental area, also known as VTA, which is at the very top of the brain stem. And this part of the brain releases the chemical dopamine, which travels through the pathway to an area in the forebrain, the front part of the brain called the nucleus accumbens. And from there, the pathway goes up into the prefrontal cortex, the thinking and memory part of the brain. So all psychoactive substances activate this pleasure pathway. The effect that a drug will have on a person's biology is somewhat predictable, but not always because it depends upon the particular person. So a drug can have different effects at different times, for example. Men use drugs more and have more symptoms, but Women's brains are more damaged by drugs, so those are some of the differences. Psychoactive drugs activate the pleasure pathway in the brain, which releases many different chemicals, starting with dopamine and then the opiates, which produce pleasure and relieve pain. Uh, and the problem is that the use of these drugs changes the neurochemistry of the brain, changes the synapse, and this is what it results in addiction that the person feels that they need to have the drug. One effect of psychoactive drugs is called tolerance. What this means is as you're using a psychoactive drug, this is tricking your brain, affecting the synapse, the chemicals at the synapse. And what happens is that your brain changes. So you end up with an addiction. And this means that there's some changes that happen in the synapses of your brain. Now you need more of the drug than before that, to get the same effects, that's called tolerance. But your brain is not only becoming tolerant to the dosage of drug that you're taking, it's also relating to the environment that you're in. So if a person is always shooting heroin in a particular place with particular paraphernalia, and then later does that same dosage in a different setting, it will be too much and somebody can die from an overdose. So the problem is that our brain not only gets used to a particular dosage, but it gets used to the circumstances, the situation that you're in. So if you take the same dose in a different circumstance, it'll be too much. The scientists like to put things in categories, don't they? They like to divide the world up into a taxonomy. And so with drugs, uh, it's very difficult to do this because, for example, alcohol and uh, nicotine uh, sometimes have depressant qualities, sometimes have stimulant qualities. So it's, it's not easy to put drugs into various categories, but here are some that are commonly used. Number one, the opiates or opioids like heroin and morphine and codeine, for example. Uh, 
Uh, these are drugs that uh, stimulate certain receptors in the brain that are painkillers uh, and give a feeling of pleasure. Secondly, depressants. These are uh, drugs that slow down the body, like alcohol or anti-anxiety medicines. Third are stimulants that speed up the body, like cocaine or caffeine or nicotine or amphetamines. Four are the dissociatives or hallucinogens, like LSD and other drugs that uh, give you a sense of uh, altered perception. Uh, five, the empathogens like ecstasy, the main ingredient there is MDMA or mephedrone. And then finally, the uh, cannabinoids like marijuana, which uh, activate uh, chemicals in your brain called endocannabinoids. This illustration is called the drug wheel. And you can find these different categories in the center of the wheel. And then the effects uh, are listed. And then some examples of drugs in each category are listed. So you could pause the video here to look more closely at the drug wheel. Some drugs are much more addictive than other drugs. For example, heroin and nicotine are very, very addictive. Uh, cocaine, very addictive. And some cause uh, extreme physical harm. Uh, so this chart shows a little bit. Uh, you can stop the video if you'd like to look at this chart. Shows a little bit of the dependence level and the physical harm level of different psychoactive substances. People often ask if addiction is genetic. Uh, and that's a complicated question because pretty much every physical characteristic or psychological characteristic is influenced by genetics. So everything about us is genetic to some extent. Here's an example of alcohol addiction. Uh, if you have fewer dopamine receptors, that means uh, you need to drink more alcohol in order to get a high, and this makes you susceptible to addiction because you can't become addicted to a substance unless you take enough of it to change your brain biologically, upset the balance of chemicals in your brain. And secondly, some people are deficient in a liver enzyme called ALDH, uh, and this means that they cannot drink very much alcohol. So people deficient in that enzyme actually uh, will not become addicted to alcohol. Opiates are drugs that come from nature. They come from the opium poppy plants. Uh, the poppy plants secrete a liquid called sometimes poppy tears. And in that, there are these chemicals that affect the brain. They're very powerful painkillers and they're very addictive. We have morphine and codeine and thebane that can be derived from the poppy tears of the poppy plant. Those are opiates like heroin and morphine that are used in hospitals, for example, for, uh, for pain relief. Opioids, the, the suffix oid means similar to. So opioids are often synthetic. Synthetic means made in a laboratory. Uh, quite often these painkillers are made using thebane or other natural opiates in order to uh, create a drug uh, that is used for, for uh, pain relief. Opioids like fentanyl, for example, uh, are extremely addictive and extremely dangerous. About 50% of heroin users die from heroin, so it's extremely dangerous drug uh, and leads to many, many deaths. There are many opioids that are used for pain relief that are prescription medicines, like Vicodin, for example, Dilaudin, uh, Percocet. Uh, these are semi-synthetic, that is, they're made in laboratory, but they use some natural ingredient. One modern advance is the chemical naloxone, which can actually save people's lives from a fatal overdose from opioids. What naloxone does is it blocks the opioid receptors in the brain and so stops an overdose uh, from occurring. Depressants are drugs that reduce arousal or reduce stimulation of the body. 
They do this primarily by acting on a receptor in the brain for the chemical GABA. So GABA is a chemical in your brain that is a relaxation chemical. It lowers your blood pressure, it slows your heartbeat, uh, and there are receptors in the brain for GABA that are stimulated by alcohol and anti-anxiety medicines like benzodiazepines and other depressants. Uh, this is why you should not mix together anti-anxiety meds with alcohol because they both stimulate GABA receptors and you could overstimulate the GABA receptors and then you become really too relaxed, you become dead. So if your heartbeat goes too low and your blood pressure goes too low, you die. So this is a, a quite a common uh, overdose problem where people take alcohol with anti-anxiety medicines like benzodiazepines. Another category is stimulants. They are often known as uppers, or as the depressants are called downers. There are many different kinds of stimulants like nicotine, caffeine, cocaine, amphetamines, cot, and beetle. These drugs affect certain chemicals in the brain like epinephrine and norepinephrine and dopamine that arouse the body, that stimulate the body increase the heartbeat and increase the blood pressure, for example. Stimulants, of course, are sometimes used as recreational drugs, but they have lots of different uses. For example, they're used to treat disorders such as ADHD. They're used by people to rev up their bodies for dancing or parties, or maybe for studying, uh, also to feel euphoria or excitement, or to delay sleep, to stay awake, maybe to study. Caffeine is the most used psychoactive substance in the world. It is partially an antagonist of a chemical called adenosine. Adenosine builds up in the body during awake, and then when we go to sleep, it decreases. Uh, so adenosine is related to sleep, which is why caffeine, when it blocks the adenosine receptors, makes us aroused and makes it difficult to sleep. The pleasure pathway in the brain uses the chemical dopamine. When dopamine is released, some of it is brought back into the cell that it came from. That process is called reuptake. Now, when you take cocaine, cocaine blocks the reuptake of dopamine. That means there'll be more dopamine in the synapse because less of it is being taken back in to replenish the cell that it came from. So cocaine can, can be very, very addictive because it will change the chemistry of the synapse. Another category are the psychedelic drugs, sometimes called hallucinogenic drugs, hallucinogens. Even though they don't really cause hallucinations, what these drugs do is they alter your perceptions so the world looks a little bit weird. The most potent of the psychedelic drugs, and maybe the most common, is LSD, sometimes just called acid. This is a synthetic drug that was created in a laboratory. Hallucinogens or psychedelics uh, act on serotonin receptors in the brain. Here on the left, I'm showing serotonin uh, pathways that are spread out throughout the brain. And these uh, receptors are active during REM sleep, which is when we are dreaming. In fact, LSD has a chemical structure that looks very, very similar to serotonin. Some other sources of hallucinogens are mescaline from the peyote cactus, DMT, which comes from plants, usually grown in South America, psilocybin from mushrooms, sometimes called shrooms, and bufotenine uh, that comes from the glands of certain toads. Another category of psychoactive drugs are called empathogens or entactogens. Uh, they produce experiences of emotional relatedness, emotional communion, oneness, or, uh, an openness with others, like emp having empathy or sympathy for other people. Uh, the most commonly used of these is called ecstasy. The active ingredient is MDMA. Like most empathogens, this is an amphetamine uh, and a mild hallucinogen. Uh, sometimes people uh, take what they think are uh, pure MDMA in a crystalline form or a powder form. Uh, 
This is called Molly or Mandy, uh, but that is slightly different than a chemical called MDA that comes from a sassafras uh, plant and is sometimes called sass or sally. Marijuana has many nicknames like weed, pot, grass, and Mary Jane. It's sometimes called cannabis because it comes from the leaves and flowers of a plant called cannabis. The active ingredients in marijuana, well, there are many of them. The two that are most prominent are THC and CBD, also known as cannabidiol. Um, these active ingredients affect the brain because they mimic natural chemicals in our brain that are called endocannabinoids. Marijuana has different effects depending upon the strain of marijuana that is used. But typical effects are euphoria, meaning a sort of, sort of happiness, a dreamy state, a poor motor coordination. It can also lower IQ, especially in teens, can cause memory problems and can even trigger psychosis like schizophrenia. One of the common effects of marijuana is time alteration in which everything seems to be going at a very slow rate. The effects of marijuana are due to the fact that the active ingredients in marijuana are very similar in molecular shape to certain natural chemicals in our brain that are called endocannabinoids. We have many different kinds of endocannabinoids. And when you take marijuana, this stimulates their receptors in the brain and so you get these different kinds of effects. One of the endocannabinoids is found in the hippocampus, the learning and memory center of the brain. This is called anandamide. And so THC, the primary active ingredient uh, in marijuana, uh, activates anandamide receptors. And the problem is over, over a, a long period of time of taking marijuana, this can actually damage the receptors in the hippocampus and that's why learning and memory problems result from heavy use of marijuana, especially among young people. Marijuana is a complicated drug because it has some uh, potentially positive effects, especially uh, in medical uses, but it also has many, many more negative effects. So it's also complicated because the uh, criminalization of marijuana has resulted in a huge number of problems in society. So it's probably better to decriminalize marijuana, but still warn people about its dangerous effects. Now that you know a bit about drugs, you should also know that substance abuse can be successfully treated. Many biological treatments have been developed in recent years. However, a multidimensional approach is the best, and that's one that treats the whole person. There are lots of resources for example, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. 